Hey everyone, welcome back to the another video of Ingenious Academy. And uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the stress, strain. We'll check out uh, the Young's modulus. We'll uh, see the bulk modulus, rigidity modulus, shear modulus, Poisson's ratio. So, guys, please stay tuned till the end. And guys, please do subscribe to my educational channel, Ingenious Academy. I, I, I am really like. Uh, I really want to do something to my Indian education system. I do want to improve that system. So guys, please do support me. Please do share all my videos to your friends, family, to your social networking groups as well. So guys, without wasting any time, let's begin with our today's topic that is nothing but the stress, strain and the different types of modulus. So stress. In engineering, the stress is the common phenomenon. In machine design, it's also like it's also very essential parameter to learn. There are different types of stresses which we have seen in our previous video. So in this video, we'll check out what is actually the meaning of the stress. What is strain? So first of all, stress. Stress is nothing but the a pressure which is exerted on a certain area so that your particular part gets induced with stress. It means a pressure is acting on a surface area. It means that the stress is acting on that particular specimen. So basically that is the simple definition of the stress, which is nothing but the force uh, or else pressure acting on an area. So force is there in Newtons and the area is there in Newton, uh, mm square or else meter square. So that's why this particular stress is having the unit of Newton per meter square so moving ahead next is the strain so suppose I'm having a specimen which is there in a tension it means like the tensile forces acting on the both the sides of your specimen which is perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular to the surface area of your specimen the specimen is the having the diameter D and having a length L so the specimen is into the uh, tension or the tensile forces are acting on your specimen so due to that you know due to that tensile forces due to that action of pulling like there will be a, some kind of the elongation also there is like the elongation in the length and there will be the increase in the length so that is nothing but the, that is called as a in a simple way this is called as a deformation so it means so due to that stress there is some kind of the deformation gets occurred so that is the simple phenomenon so due to a particular stress, there is a particular amount of the deformation in terms of length, in terms of diameter. As this particular specimen is in tension, the diameter also, in, uh, its length increases as well as its diameter also decreases. So this is the, you know, this is the simple phenomenon over here in terms of, in the terms, uh, in terms of your strain. The strain is nothing but the deformation. So we can term this particular strain is as the change in length that is nothing but the ratio of your original length to the change in length so that's why this particular strain is having is having the original length on the numerator and the uh, change in length in the denominator which is expressed in mm or meter so mm mm gets cancelled so that's why this particular strain is having a no unit it is unitless so this is nothing but the so we have seen so far we have seen this particular stress as well as strain so moving ahead to the modulus different types of modulus the first one is the young's modulus so as we have seen this particular specimen which is there in tension so these are the you know the tensile forces acting like uh, acting in the opposite direction this is the action of the pulling so that's why you know there is with the change in length is there so this particular whole of the phenomenon which is nothing but the your young's modulus so Young's modulus is the ratio of your stress is acting on your particular specimen. So that's why it is the ratio of to the stress to the strain. Just due to that stress, there will be the elongation. So in Young's modulus, you know, the tensile stress is considered. You have to understand that in Young's modulus, the tensile stress is considered. And due to that tensile stress, 
there will be some amount of tensile strain which will induced in that particular specimen. So tensile, uh, this Young's modulus is nothing but the ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain. So as we have seen the stress is having of the Newton per meter square and the strain is unitless. So that's why the unit of the Young's modulus become Newton per meter square. So moving ahead next is the bulk modulus. So bulk modulus is somewhere related to the compressive stresses, compressive forces basically. As we have seen this Young's modulus was related to your tensile stress, tensile stress. This Young's modulus is related to the tensile stress. The bulk modulus is related to the compressive stress. Suppose I'm having a circular body and I'm trying to squeeze uh, that particular circular body in all the direction. I'm trying to exert a pressure, a compressive pressure on that body such that it will get deformed. So that's why a per that particular body is having a volume, you know, original volume and then after deformation, the there will be the change in the volume of that particular body. So over here, bulk modulus states that the compressive stresses which is acting on that particular body which tends to change its volume. So that's why this is bulk modulus stated that this particular cup it is the ratio of the compressive force, compressive stress to the change in volume. That is nothing but the compressive strain. We can call it as a compressive strain as this is you know this is the type of deformation. So that's why this bulk modulus is nothing but the ratio of this particular compressive stress to the compressive stress. So as we have seen this particular compressive stress has the unit of Newton per meter square and the compressive strain will be having no unit. It is unitless so that's why the, your bulk modulus will be having the unit of Newton per meter square. So guys moving ahead next and the last one is nothing but the, your shear modulus or rigidity modulus. Suppose I'm having a cube which is fixed at one end and free at the other end. I'm trying to and I'm trying to like the exert a particular amount of the load that is P on the uh, corner of that particular cube in such a way that it will like uh, you know it will deform tangentially to the surface area so that's why you know over here this particular shearing stress gets induced so somehow this particular rigidity modulus is related to the shear stresses so this is how you know this particular three modulus are uh, like related to the different types of stresses the first one is the Young's modulus which is related to the tensile stress uh, bulk modulus is related to the compressive stresses and the shear modulus or the rigidity modulus is related to the shear forces so over here i'm having uh, this cube which is fixed at one end and uh, at the one corner i'm just exerting a load p which tries to deform that particular cube in such a way that deformation will act angular so that's why the angle will be theta and the deformation over here can be termed as a tan theta so that's why the ratio becomes you know this particular shear stress this particular uh, rigidity modulus is the ratio of this particular shear stress which is acting to your uh, uh, like the shear strain which is uh, which uh, which is nothing but the, your tan theta so guys over here in this case of rigidity modulus the stress which is expressed in uh, newton per meter square and the strain which is having no unit the unit the same over here in this case also which is nothing but the newton per meter square so that is the that was the shear modulus or we can call it as a rigidity modulus so moving on next is the poisons ratio as we have seen in the case of young's modulus the specimen was into loaded condition you know there is the axial pulling there was a tensile forces which is acting the perpendicular to the you know perpendicular to the surface area and which is acting on the opposite direction so due to that there will be the increase in the length of your specimen that is the that is the one type of the strain gets induced and there will be like the another strain induced that is nothing but the you know the change in the diameter the diameter of your specimen will decrease as you know there will be the length increase over here so that is nothing but the, there are two types of the strain which gets induced in that particular specimen that is the first of all the linear strain and the second one is the lateral strain so over here this particular poisons ratio is nothing but the ratio of the linear strain to the lateral strain so linear strain over here is nothing but the change in length upon original length and uh, your lateral strain will be the change in diameter upon original diameter so that is nothing but the your poisons ratio 
So this particular Poisson's ratio will be having a no unit. It is unitless as this is the ratio of the strains and we all know that the strain is having no unit. So that's why the Poisson's ratio will be having no unit. So guys, overall, in this video we have seen the stress, we have seen the strain, what is strain, which is nothing but the elongation, the deformation. We have seen the different types of modulus, that is Young's modulus, bulk modulus, rigidity modulus and Poisson's ratio. So guys, I hope you understood these three types of uh, modulus in engineering. So guys, thank you for watching my video. Please do subscribe to my education channel, Engineers Academy.